how to create a formula in Excel to always return the last entered value in a data set. So it doesn't matter if you input new information every other day or every day you update your data set. It doesn't matter because whenever you input a new information such as item ABC, for example, I'm going to press enter. And as you can see, this cell always get updated with the last entered value. So let's see how can we create this formula in Excel step by step from scratch. Let's go. The first thing that we need is to have a data set because from the data set, we can bring back as a result the last entered value. And it doesn't matter what type of data you are using Excel. You can use your own data, your own sample. And uh, here I have information such as date, item, quantity, unit of measurement, and also the total. I can use any different column that I have here to always bring back the last entered value. I want to use maybe the items, but you can use any different column, doesn't matter. I'm going to stick with the items. So the first thing that I'm going to do here to the, to the right, I'm going to use uh, maybe the column I, but you can use also any different column, okay? And uh, of course, you, we can create this function. We can, yes, create this function, this formula within just one single cell, but here, I think it's easier to understand if we separate those steps into different columns. So let's start with the first step that is to check everything that is equal to a value because I have some blank rows right here. So if I have blank rows, I'm not bringing back as a result a blank row. And I want to bring back as a result the value that is directly before those blank rows. That is here in this situation, the item 010. But it doesn't matter if I add new rows right here, it's going to work in the same way. So in the column I, I want to input the equal sign and then I can either select a small range like this or I can select everything within the column C. Just click over the letter of the column. And uh, I think the second way is better because now we have more rows. And uh, even though you create new items and input here, new information, it's going to work. So, okay. And uh, I want to check if this, those values that I have are different then open and close quotations or are different than nothing, are different than a blank cell. And to use the different, you need to input the less than sign with the greater than sign. So you need to append together those two. I'm going to press enter and the, this is the result that I got. And maybe, depends on the, your Excel version, you're not going to have the same visualization that I'm having here with the, the values spilling over those cells. And uh, if you want to check if the result is correct, you can double click in the first cell, one, two, where you have the formula, select everything, and then press the F9 key, F9. And you can also use the formula bar to see the results, because that way you can check all those true and falses within the cell. And if you press escape, you can go back to the normal view, let's say. And as you can see, uh, the last true that I have is in the same row where I have the last information. And when I start to have blank cells, I have here a false. Basically, in the formula that we did here, we are verifying if the values that we have are different than blank. The headers are different than blank. So, okay, it's true. And then again, again, again. And when I have blank spots, blank rows, I'm going to have false because blank is not different than blank. It's equal to. So this is why I got false. And uh, knowing this logic, I can create here. Another column, and remember, we, we're gonna bring together all those columns uh, when we're done here with these steps. Equal sign one divided by the first cell that I have to the left. Enter. I got one, one as result. Why? Because one in Excel is equal to the number one. So when I divide one by the true, and the true is equal to one, I'm gonna have as result one divided by one equals, equals to one. But uh, when I have false, false is equal to zero. And one divided by zero, it's an error in Excel. So look at what's going to happen here. I'm going to click, hold, and drag down this function. Uh, here in this column, you don't need to bring it down to the last row. And uh, as you guys can see here, now where it was true, now it's equal to one. Where it was false, now it's equal to this error, divide by division by zero. Now we can continue here. And uh, the last step is equal sign. I want to use the lookup function to bring back the value that is before, directly before the arrow. So this in this scenario here is the number one. But the lookup function can bring back a correspondent value of something. So if the number one directly before the arrow is in this row right here, I can bring back the item that I have in the same row. So this is what I'm going to do. 
look up. I want to look for the number two. But wait, there's no number twos here in this list. Okay, I agree with you. But at the lookup function, it can bring the approximate value. So it's gonna try to find the number two. It's not here, it's not here, it's not here, and blah, blah, blah. So yeah. And now when the lookup function got here an error, it's not gonna continue to check the values. It's gonna go back and always take the last value directly before the error. So this is why I'm using here the number two, but uh, you can also use number 212. It doesn't matter, okay? So we're gonna use two. Choma, the lookup vector is gonna be the column that I have here, column J, Choma. The result vector or the value that, that correspond to this number one is gonna be here in the item. So I can select the entire column C and that's it. If I close parentheses and then press enter, look what, what I'm gonna have here, item 010. And this is exactly the last value that I have here, item 010. This is how we can create this formula, this function in Excel to always bring back the last result, the last value. Now, if you want to put everything together, let me read it off everything that I did here. Equal sign lookup function. I want you to look for the number two or number, I don't know, maybe 99, it doesn't matter. And then trauma. The lookup vector is going to be 1 divided by open parentheses. And then I can select the range that I'm going to use, that is the items. And it's very important to check if those values are different than blank, close parentheses. Joma, the result vector, again, can be the column C. Simple as that. And then I can close parentheses and then press enter. This is the last entered value. And I also here I can write in last entered value. And even if I add here new rows, January 10th of 2024, enter. And if you pay attention here, the cell where I have the items is still blank. So I'm going to have here the item 10. Yeah, still, because the last item basically is the item 10. But if you want to always bring it back, the item that corresponds to the last entered row, it doesn't matter if you already input some formations or not. You can change it here in the formula, one, two. And I, instead of using the lookup vector, in the column C, you can look, uh, use the lookup vector in the column B, for example. Let's check if it's correct. No, it's not. So I need to invert the order here. Okay, so I want to look up in the column B and bring it back the result in the column C. Now, if I press enter, I always gonna have the last value, the last row, not always the last value. And I, if I input here a new value such as Joko Excel, for example, I'm gonna press enter. Now, uh, this is the result that I'm going to have. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is how we can always have the last entered value in Excel. If you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know. Comment down below and I see you tomorrow. As every day has a new video, I see you there.